G'day guys, it's the coach here and I have an exclusive. I didn't even know I had the exclusive before I booked this in, but I have the exclusive. Uh, I am chatting with Rob Hawkins of Rob Hawkins Hobby Fame. If you don't know this blog, I don't think you've, you've been a part of the Warhammer community for long. This place is the best hands down hobby blog going around. And don't oversell I'm it. Gonna, oh, it's great. <laughs> I have been a fan of yours for such a long time. You could have told me to go away. I don't want to do an interview. I don't want to chat on YouTube. And I'm still a big fan. I have been a fan for a long time. Um, so this is not a fanboy episode. This is me saying, mm -hmm. go check out his blog. Rob, g'day. Welcome to the show. Hi, hi coach. How are you? <laughs> good, mate. Really good. Um, so the topic of today is going to be about blogging and one of the reasons I wanted to bring this up is because I think that there is a huge opportunity for hobby bloggers. And I don't think there's enough content creation when it comes to blogs. People are talking about setting up podcasts. People are talking about setting up YouTube channels. They're doing Twitch streams. They're recording the battle reports. There's a lot of cool stuff happening from a, a, a video and an auditory kind of point of view, but very few people are creating blogs. And I think that's a big space for us that we're missing out on. So I wanted to talk to you, an absolute blog master, and understand a little bit about your blogging history, how you got into blogging, why you keep blogging, despite having these podcasts and YouTubes and all that stuff available, and then kind of find out a bit like, if I was interested in starting up my own blog, where do I start and how do I yeah. start? Awesome. Sounds like, sounds, so, sounds like a good, a good yeah, discussion. Yeah, yeah. Yep, absolutely. I'm so to I'm going to I'm going to try to poorly introduce you, and then you can tell me where I've made things up, or stretch things, or add things. So, Rob, you've had a blog for a number of years now. It's probably the mm -hmm. blog, that, one of the first blogs that I got a, I got to know of in the Warhammer community. I thought blogs yeah. were about poetry and dear diary type stuff, but clearly, blogging can be more more than so, just writing yeah, poetry. It can be like anything you want, you can start up your own little web page and blog about it and talk about stuff. Yeah, I started this back in like 2012. So it's, what's that, eight years now? That's massive. Yeah. <laughs> so you've been blogging for eight years now. You also are a former Games Workshop employee. So you worked in the store. You contributed to White Dwarf. You wrote some articles. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I... Uh, are you still going? Do you want me to take over <laughs> talking about I, I, myself? Oh, I, I, you've worked for Privacy Press. Yeah. You have yeah. um, done a whole bunch of cool stuff there. You freelance for some companies. Yeah, yeah. Do you want to? Do you want to let the internet of... know? Yeah. Well, I I got I got into Warhammer like back in like 1997. Um, my friend had been in the army and he came back and he's like, "Hey, there's this thing called Warhammer and it's like a sci-fi version and a fantasy version and I like the fantasy version." So he, he, we got the starter set for it, and it was uh, this was like fifth edition back when it was lizard men and Bretonians, and we just put models together and started playing. And I was like, oh cool, there's undead stuff, and I love the undead. I've always, even when I used to play D and D as a kid, I was always fascinated with the undead and skeletons and zombies and stuff like that. So I was like, this is this is right in my wheelhouse. I, I love this stuff. I, I've I've always been an artist and you know drawing comics and stuff and. I just I love building models and I'm like this this is it this is this is this is what I this is who I am now I guess I'm good, just going to play Warhammer for the rest of my life. So yeah, so I, I got into this and I was 97 so I guess probably about 2000 was when I when I started working for Games Workshop like I found a store and I'm like oh this is really cool there's a whole whole big world about this cuz previously I was just buying it at the local store. Um, and they had a few things but then you see the GW store and it's this like whole new world and all these other games and um, this what was that? Um, uh, Mordheim was out back then. War yeah, Master, the 97, 98. Out. That was like yeah, that was like bold, the Mordheim. That um, it was uh, right going into sixth edition was right before, right around that time. Like two thousand was when I started working there. So I think I can't remember if sixth edition was ninety nine or two thousand, but either way, right around that time. That was right the golden there. age where we actually yeah. got uh, plastic miniatures for the yep. first time and yep. multi part miniatures which was i remember me trying to build out my units three models at a time a metal blister yeah pack. oh my god yeah that's how it was when i started too it was like right on the cusp getting old metal zombies and then they 
put out the the new plastic zombie kit and we're, we're still using those same zombies today i was gonna say we still use the same <laughs> zombie kit today um I was really excited about the the Empire handgunners that are, no, not not the, yeah. not the current kit they were the kit prior but mm -hmm. uh, my gosh you have seen some things and I think that's a uh, that's another really exciting part about your journey is you have been in the industry and I think a lot of people uh -huh. here also may aspire to write for Black Library work for Games Workshop be a game developer or maybe they're creating content because they want to get noticed yeah. by a game shop whether it is Games yeah. Workshop yeah. whether it's Fantasy Flight come on or Kumon, whatever it might cool. be. Cool. Come on, yeah. Come yeah. cool, cool on, yeah. Yep, yep. <laughs> there's a there's a children's ed education C Simon, company. I think, is what a lot of people say too. That's that's how the the down the lingo in the streets are they the Simon, <laughs> the Simon. We're saying. So you've been you've been in Warhammer for a long time, and yeah. um, and obviously you know that kind of well not obviously but that shows in your in your blog. It Everything's shows on square basis. <laughs> I, I go through and again I, I get a lot of insights from your blog because you are death very death focused mm -hmm. and despite me not being a death player I mean I do play a little bit of death but mm -hmm. I'm not I'm, I'm not, a, not a death player I find a lot of inspiration and one of the things that I love is your is your painting style and I love uh, and what what I how I found you was actually because of through terrain and I know you are a master at building and and making terrain and whether it's kit bashing existing terrain pieces like some of the cool stuff with the wall scry citadel whether it is making your own things and i know you've got your own web store link is in the description go check it out but um <laughs> a nice little plug there thanks <laughs> but there's a lot of inspiration as well and again that's why i love blogs because finding videos can be quite difficult mm -hmm. blogs there's, there's a real power in blogs there's a real power in blogs that i don't need my headphones i don't uh, like I yeah, can read them whenever I need to, and I can write them whenever I want to write yeah, them. Yeah, yeah. A lot, of, a lot. A big challenge with with having a YouTube channel is you you've got to you have to be on a schedule, right? You're doing a live show basically that's got to air the same, relatively the same time every week, you know. And if it's if it's a blog, you can even if you set it to post at a specific date and time, you can write that whenever you want. You can stack up a bunch of them ahead of time and then just release them. I guess I guess technically you can do that with a show too, but it won't be live. Right. So well, I mean, yeah. like for, for, yeah, a bit a bit yeah, of there's also, for my... there's on, also Rob. there's also the challenge to to try to be there when it's happening, right? If if you're to YouTube channel like Warhammer Weekly, everybody wants to be there when it when they're recording so they can see it live, they can participate in it more and comment, you know, in the in the, the chat box and everything. Um whereas a blog, you just you know, you it updates every week or so and you read it when it's out and you you can you can it's it's like a book. You take it with you and look at it whenever you feel like it. Yeah, I look. The, you know, the insight to my world, that, and, and even if you're not a live streamer on YouTube or Twitch, it takes a lot of time for you to create uh, a show. Whether mm -hmm. you are in Adobe software and you're editing, you know, you look at something like what Halo yeah. Twitch might, might do, for example, or Doom and Darkness. Yep, yep. They spend a time, a whole bunch of so, uh, software editing to package up their videos or to um to make some sexy animations yeah a blog and and one of the things that i really enjoy with blogging and, and i, I want to find out why you started the blog very soon is you can you know i could spend five or ten minutes writing down a sentence a paragraph mm -hmm. and anytime i get free time i could be contributing it and then publish it when i need to yeah, um yeah. we're all really used to things like the warhammer community which is essentially a blog that's all yeah, it is yeah, it absolutely is yeah, wake up in the it. morning, check the news, see the articles, see the article, uh, the the any videos or podcast. It's it's nice little aggregation of content. Yeah, totally. Um, <laughs> no, it, it's so yeah. simple and easy. So exactly. if you if you are someone who is thinking about getting into a blog, uh, we'll talk a bit about the structure and how you do it. But it is yep. a very easy. It's easy to do. It's a very minimal barrier to entry. Um, yeah, and um, you you had asked before the show, like, what are some of the what are some of the requirements to do a blog? Like, do you need to know no computer programming or coding or anything like that? Nope, none of that. It's just go to go to Blogger, pick out a name, start your blog, and it's you know it's it's basically all there built in. You and it's you know you just pick some templates out that you like. You get you know take pictures with your phone upload those put captions under them or write text in in between whatever whatever you want to do it's so yeah, easy 
It is very easy. I remember, I remember I did start a, a blog in the late nineties, early two thousands, and there was a, a, a much higher requirement to be able to mm. code, to be able to use, you know, HTML and a whole bunch of things. Yeah, yeah. But now things like blogger, and I'd love to know, is there, you know, even WordPress, WordPress yeah, yeah, WordPress is, is another one. I never, I never used that one. Blogger is pretty much the only thing I really have experience with. Um, I guess if you were if you were doing one for uh, for more um, revenue generating, you could use um, what's the one Patreon. A lot of people use that. That's another one you could set up with that as a blog. That's that would be more for a, a paying audience or have exclusive paid content on there. Although it might be very hard if you're just starting your blog for the yeah, first time. Yeah, yeah, just like, starting hey, out. come to my Patreon, yeah, come, come give me a couple of dollars. You're like, yeah. who are you? <laughs> why should, why should <laughs> yeah, I pay exactly. for it? Why should yeah. I pay for your articles? But So what got you, so you've obviously been in the hobby for a long mm -hmm. time now. You know, you've been playing since Warhammer Fantasy Battles. You've, you know, moved to Age of Sigma. You play other different games as mm -hmm. well. What got you to first set up a blog? Like what drew you to this well, blogging concept? I, I think like I was with Games Workshop from 2000 to about 2005. I had a few years off. Um, I did some like freelance comic book work and things like that in the meantime. And then I got the job at Privateer Press and moved out to Seattle. And while I was there, we were, I, I was the hobby manager at, uh, at Privateer Press. And I, you know, I had, was building terrain for them for, for their tournaments and for photography. I was managing their, their hobby line of tools and things like that. Um, and one of the things I was tasked with was doing a, I forgot if it was, I think it was only monthly, weekly sounds like it was a lot, but, um, it was, uh, doing a, a hobby blog there and just basically doing scenery tutorials. Like scenery is kind of my bag. That's probably what I'm most known for. Um, so I was, yeah, I was doing little tutorials for building scenery and stuff to, to, you know, play on. And I really enjoyed doing that and I wanted to do my own content uh, my own blog i thought about you know and post myself but i didn't think it would be appropriate to for a, an employee of privateer press to have his own private blog where he's mostly playing games workshop product games workshop that's, content that's fair that's right kind of so fair. i was like oh, i'm not gonna do it i'll hold off and then i you know i left there in 2000 at the end of 2011 so i'm like all right this is it january 2012 i'll start my blog and I did, and <laughs> the rest is history. So yeah, I just came up with a name. Oops, no, that oh, was me. Oh, okay. That was me. I thought I thought I <laughs> might like, put a little bit of No, I thought I'd actually put a bit of context. So for uh, for the folks playing at home, if you're watching the podcast later on, uh, maybe you want to come to YouTube or at least go on to um, Rob Rob Hawkins' blog. Um, go Google that; it's very easy to find, and yeah. you can see his website. I've just brought up an example, which is some of my favorite ones, which is the terrain showcases, because for me, that's how I very first probably got introduced to you because as a tournament organizer, I've been really trying to learn how to make great terrain. Mm. And, I, and I, and one of my very close and dearest friends, Deke, um, mm -hmm. who is the Lord of death, he runs the death grips in, you know, in, in yeah, the no, Facebook he, pages. Um, he's absolutely obsessed with this stuff. You know, he's based up his models using your, resin basing pieces um always shows me your stuff so as soon as i came here i was just blown away with the way that you either make your own terrain or you have taken existing kits and this is like the warscry citadel for example mm -hmm. and an, uh, another tower that used to be available called is it the death yeah. death knell um death watch knell but it's actually it's actually two warscry citadel kits but the the tower portion of the Warscryer Citadel is the same pieces as the Death Knell Watch, so that I basically got two two citadels. So I used one to build the citadel and this little um, observatory piece, and the re the leftover components from the second second one I used to build the watchtower, which was one of my more recent pieces that I finished off this year. And the, and this is beautiful. Like uh, for someone who wants to, you know really boost up their table and have maybe you know during covid they want to have their own gaming table they can't go mm -hmm. to their game store anymore um and they're looking for interesting ways to recreate and tweak some of the games workshop scenery pieces or even using other people's kits um you know this is just one of many wonderful examples how you've taken one kit and you've made it into multiple parts or you've kind of grabbed two or three of the same kit and made uniquely interesting pieces while thematically consistent 
Yeah, that's that's what I really strive for with my scenery is to make it make it playable and just have a theme going on. Like I've seen some people are, have, have commented when other people will post pictures of like, hey, look at this. Or like, oh, enough with the skulls. And it's like, that's that's what it's about though. It's This is like the land of the dead. It's of course it's littered with skulls and tombstones everywhere. Well, I mean, you're dead. You, you play death, right? Like, you yeah. know, come on, you're not, you're not in the, the land of rainbows and hugs and, yep. and fairies and elves. We are literally in death and, and you know, that's literally what your tables feel like. So I love it. And that's just one example of many on your blog that uh, I make, I may jump back and forth between, but okay. I just kind of like for me in this, in today's day and age, right. You know, if I want to share hobby photos of my hobby, for example, mm -hmm. whether it's work in progress, whether it's completed tasks, I can do that on, on Instagram. I can do it on mm -hmm. Twitter. Um, and they're great places. Don't get me wrong. You know, social media can be really beneficial. Mm -hmm. But where I find that blogging really adds a whole lot of value is literally what I just showed you, which was bringing up instructions. You can mm -hmm. kind of take me through step by step with multiple photos, to show me, you know, the work in progress or give me context. Oh, I did this, I did this, I did this. Yeah, yeah. Hey, that's uh, one of my favorite things to do is is what I call my uh, my project log series, where I show you a project that I'm working on and I go through it step by step. And each, you know, and they end up being like seven or eight parts long. But each week I get a little bit more progress on it and work on one particular thing, like sculpt the sculpt the stonework on the wall this week. And next week I add some fencing around it, you know, and do do the flocking and painting. And those are cool because I can build it up slowly over time. And it, it also gives me content because I don't have to push myself to completely finish something before I can finally take pictures of it and post it on the blog and show it off. So it, it allows me to stretch out the, uh, stretch out the content a little bit more. I was just bringing up an example here where I've just literally peeled this up um, in one of your modeling tutorials of a vermin lord. And I love that you're able to use multiple pictures, but then give me context of what you've done. You've then kind of, you know, showed me different parts of where you might be tweaking it or where you're pulling it from the um, the book. You might show me other parts that you're kind of bringing together and how you're going to sub-assembly it. Um, and this is truly fascinating because it's, it's an art form that you can't quite do with Instagram. Um, yeah, I don't use Instagram, but does can you can't really put captions or anything on your. You can you can you, you can put some like descriptions and different things. So for people who are like, well, why do I want to use blog over Instagram? Um, I find for me it's easier to find. So Google definitely will reward you and make it more searchable. Mm -hmm. I find that it's easier to kind of put down step by steps. Like if you just wanted to show off like, hey, this is the hobby that I've done this week and here's one photo or here's a couple of photos. Yeah, Instagram and Twitter can be great for that. But if you're doing like this this tutorial or you're breaking it down step by step or you're trying to see the progression of this particular kit, uh, it's a lot easier to tell a holistic story through a blog than normally using like social media. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, my, my process for, for putting these together is I usually I'll, I'll work on the thing, I take pictures as I go, and then I'll take all the pictures that I've got, put them in the blog, and then I'll just, you know, put them in or the order that they occur and just go through and I'll just write a caption about what I was doing step by step as I go through and I'll embellish, you know, a little more, get, get a little, little more descriptive of what's going on. Whereas I'll if be it was honest. just in Instagram, it would, you know, it would just be pictures with maybe a, a, a few lines here and there and I can go as as detailed as I, as I want to or need to for a particular I, piece. I find blogs are evergreen. So I will mm -hmm. come back to old blogs of yours that are five years old. I was actually going through a, I actually stumbled upon a Warhammer fantasy narrative blog the other day, because I'm trying to think about my, I've, I've got a narrative event that I'm going to be running early next year. And I'm trying to source some information and ideas. And I found a Warhammer fantasy blog from like seven to 10 years ago, and that content still evergreen. But for me to find a tutorial on Instagram from 12 months ago when I really need it, it's a lot harder to find on social yeah. media. So I guess that's kind of like from an index indexing perspective, mm -hmm. I find yeah. blogs useful. I find it easier to tell a story, whether it's a battle report, whether it's a tutorial, yeah. whether it's a progression of your, you know, I built this week, I built the hobby. Next week, I primed it. I converted it. I painted, you know, the base colors. Mm -hmm. You can kind of do that progression a lot easier on a blog than socials. Yeah, yeah, totally. 
So you you mentioned you made you've made um you said you've mentioned that you've made terrain. Mm -hmm. I've just shown a little bit of like your hobby. What are some of the topics that you or other people could be blogging about if they were to get into a blog? Well, I mean, people can blog about whatever you whatever they want. Um, like you were saying, people use it for poetry or you know other things, but uh, you know you you really want to personalize it and make it about you, right? And if it's if it's a if it's a like a Warhammer related blog that you're doing, what is unique about your Warhammer experience, right? Show off your army, talk about the story behind your characters. One of the things I like to do for particularly my undead army is I, I name all my characters, I come up with backstories and uh, you know, this little not I don't write prose and like text about them I mean, a little bit. I just do like a paragraph or two about like who this guy is, where he's from, and what his goals are. Like Neiman Kimmel. That's one of my oldest. Um, characters that I made for my Warhammer army back in fifth edition. Um, so he's, you know, he's, he's the necromancer and, you know, if you, scroll, if you scroll up a little bit more, his text is above it. I, I do everything in, in reverse. Everybody else seems to put the text underneath the picture, but yeah, he, uh, he, he's, you know, he's, he, I just, you know, write a little paragraph about what he is and that's that. So, so I personalize my army that way. And I, show that off and i just basically wanted to showcase you know the whole the whole thing the whole story of the army and uh take pictures of everything and that's that's pretty much why i started i really just wanted to share what i was working on you know and and document it on you know more for my purposes too i wanted to you know sort of i had had all these before i started this blog i had all these story ideas just you know floating around in my head and I'm like, you know what? I should write these down, so just so I can get it all on, you know, not on paper, literally, but you know, get it all, get it all down there, so I can keep my story straight as far as what's going on with the army. Um, there's, um, there's somebody in Australia. Um, I'm going to shout out here. His name's Gabe. Um, he runs a blog called The Runax. Um, and w one of the things that he does is he does something very similar, but he does it with all his battles. So he'll do his battle mm. reports and document his battle reports and put his narrative or his spin and he'll he'll document those stories through his blog. And it's beautiful to see, you know, the the progression of a game and the different photos and then the context or the uh what what unfolded, the yeah. dice rolls. Um it, it's so great. I, I I really enjoy it. I've done I've done one or two of those really story driven battle reports. Um they're tough to do because you got to get your friends over. You have to dedicate pretty much a whole day to it, especially if you're going to be taking pictures the whole time like this the the last one and i did one for aos but i did one with my friend for back in warhammer fantasy and geez that, that must have taken us 10 hours to play a like three thousand point game just, just I, because I, I we're think, taking so many pictures and doing everything he does it as a retrospective um <laughs> so you don't have to annoy you don't okay. have to annoy your opponent but if you're just taking a whole bunch of photos maybe well, he was into it too <laughs> Just like, hey, listen, Rob, you just got to pause for 10 minutes while I write up this part of the story. You're just like, I'm going to kill you one day. Um, <laughs> but, like, again, you know, for, for me, you know, you can uh, blog about your hobby progression, so painting, mm -hmm. tutorials. If there's things that you do really well, hell, if you do a, a basing scheme that you want to document, you could always, yeah. like, document your basing scheme so it's easier for you to come back to it. But then also other people will find value in it and they'll um, – you know, like what what you what we know is so valuable, and that's part of the reason why I have a channel like this is because I want people to hear what other people are doing and get inspired by those ideas. So, you know, not yeah, keeping totally. them to yourself, documenting them. Um, yeah, absolutely. Got... I I I did a tutorial about painting ethereals uh, when I did my first banshees a couple of years back, and I always refer back to that because part of part of the reason I did it was like I want to make sure I document my step-by-step -step process and then I can match it when I paint more of these in the future. And now I'm referring to it all the time when I, when I paint my night haunt. Do you, do you have to be a good, cause I, I guess, you know, Instagram is easy. Cause I take a photo or you know, Twitter, I yeah. take a photo, I post it up with, you know, 100, 140 characters or yep. 200 characters and, and it's easy. I don't have to do a lot of writing, but if I'm going to start a blog, do I need to be a, wonderful photographer do i need to be a strong writer 
Um, are these skills that I need to possess or? I don't, I don't think you need those skills starting out. I mean, you, you definitely want to be literate, you know, make sure you're, you edit your text, check for typos and correct grammar usage, but you don't have to, it doesn't have to be fancy. And as far as, um, as far as photography, I, I use a crappy old camera. I think I've had this camera since like 2010 and it's, you know, it's, it shows in some of the pictures if when, when you zoom in, I don't know if you can see them um, on the site itself, but when I zoom in real close, the pictures, the pixels are terrible. It's, they're, they're very, very, it's, it's not as high resolution as it could be, but you know, it does the job. It, it's, it's not fancy. Um, my lighting, I just use two, two standing lamps that have like, uh, they're like those Ikea, it's like a silver lamp with like three different lamps attached to one post. I have two of yeah. those that I put next to the, whatever I'm photographing and uh, arrange it so that the light isn't shining brightly on it, but it gets illuminated from multiple angles. Um, just make sure you have decent lighting for your photos, get, get everything in focus. And that's that, you know, and <laughs> put your pictures up. So I don't, I don't have to go and spend a whole bunch of money no. on, you know, getting an no. SLR. I mean, we, we, you don't, I don't have to be a coder, so I don't need to learn HTML no. and all no, that. No, not at all. Uh, the cool thing with, with, um, with Blogger is they do have an option to, so that you can edit it as HTML. I, I don't know the first thing about HTML, so I don't know how that's useful. I guess if you're really, really computer savvy, that would be useful for you. Maybe there's an advantage to doing it that way if, if you are, are, um, are that versed in computer language, but you really don't need to. You just, you just, it's, a, it's a template. It's, it's like typing a post on Facebook. You, know, you just put in your text, add your photos in, and that's that. By the way, this, this um, Nagash is lit. Thank uh, you. Figuratively, like, it's, it's beautiful. And I, and I think for me, when I look at your hobby, um, it's just off the charts and I see this for myself and I get inspired to do this type of thing, whether it's inspired to, to paint better, whether it's to build, you know, cinematic terrain for my own tables um, or even just appreciating someone else's level of hobby. Um, yeah. and, and it's a real dedicated space. Like I'm not being buzzed by millions of distractions and people's commentary. Like mm -hmm. I'm just enjoying the medium. And this is just one blog post I'm just going through and you can just see again, you know, this inspires me to to paint really well, to then set it up and do this, this, this. I, I, I don't have any photos like this of my army. I haven't gone out there and spent some time and built out amazing, um, amazing backdrops and, you know, documenting this hobby so that when in 10 years time, 20 years time, I can go back and reflect on this. And this is yeah. brilliant. Yeah, that's that's another thing. Is uh, it's this little dark space in the back of my mind. That's like Jesus Christ. If my my house ever burns down, and everything is destroyed, I at least have this blog, and I can go back and look at what I what I had built <laughs> at one point in my life. Well, you can also see the progression of your hobby yeah. and your conversions. Yeah. And if you want to try to replicate something, you're like, oh, I want to do that again, or mm -hmm. I want to build off a concept. The amount of times I make stuff up on the spot, like I'm like, I was going to do this. I'm going to put a bit of green stuff here. I'm going to kind of click these mm -hmm. models. I'm going to paint. And then I try to remember what I, how I painted it or what I used as a scheme or how do I how I did X. I always forget. Yeah, yeah. No, I love this. So I can, I can be... I can be doing blogs about my battle reports, my work in progress, my uh, finished work. I can do um, conversions and tutorials. I can do interviews. I could do um, list discussions. There's just so much you can mm -hmm. do in a blog. Um, and I think the writing part is just, we all could improve our writing, but yeah, also yeah. it allows us to, like when I've written blogs, I often write them on the train. I'll just you know spend 10 minutes, 15 mm -hmm. minutes of my uh like my Apple, the little notes, like just yeah, write yeah, some yeah. text, just build upon them, build upon them, and eventually I got a blog. Yep, yep. I do that too with the stories for my characters. I'll uh if I if I'm just hanging out and doing whatever or traveling or something, I'll I'll write down little I have a little notebook, I write story ideas like like for um my banshees, the story behind them. I wrote that while I was in the Philippines visiting my wife's family. And I was just reading through the Night Haunt book and writing up backstory for, for some of my characters. And then I came back home and took a bunch of photos and put them up. I do the same, even just like write their names down. So I just keep yeah. using them over time. But again, this is kind yeah. of. 
I've got a, I've got a sheet of paper, just notebook paper with some notes uh, scratched on it of like just different unit name ideas of what I need to, what, what I can call units to get to, to give them a name other than just hex riders, hex, hex rates. I'm you know. always hearing that blogging is more than just sharing photos. And I think, you know, because that's one of the big things when I was talking to to the peeps in my Discord and I'm like, you know, I'm talking to Rob Hawkins, you know, I want to, like, what's some good questions? And, you know, one of the people, a few people had said to me, like, Anthony, why bother? Like, why bother going through so much effort to create a blog compared to just chucking some photos up on Instagram or Twitter or a Facebook page? And I was thinking about this long and hard and I'm like, well, yeah, that's a really good question. Is blogging an old medium? Is this, you know, the the days of the VHS in the in the early 2000s and today it's all about Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, you know, social media. And is there a place for blogs still? And I think what I'm hearing is that it's it's more than just sharing content. You're, it's yeah. the, it's You're the documenting and archiving as well of our yeah, hobby. Yeah. Yep. You're sharing you. <laughs> but it's the, it's the documenting and archiving as well, I think. Yeah, because exactly. If you asked me about my games last year, mm -hmm. I'd go, I don't know. I don't know. I don't have yeah. any, I don't really, I have a couple of photos, but I can't recall all the detail. Yeah, I mean, it's, I guess it, we're getting into the digital age or we've been in the digital age for a while, but, you know, you could be, a lot of people keep notebooks. And you've talked about this on your show of, about when you're playing your games, Keep a no, keep a journal of how the game went and so forth. You know why not? Why keep a, why keep paper around with all that stuff written down that you got to keep track of when you can just put it up. You know, create a blog about your um, your your tournament experience. Right. This is this is my tournament journey. You know, post one is battle one, and I did this this and this, and you got pictures from the from the game. Talk about your a lot opponent. Of, um a lot of people say to me that they want to write down more of their 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 games and i think when you're in the heat of the battle for three you know two hours three hours however however long your game might be yeah um we're so in the moment that often we don't take that step back and reflect and we don't one think about what we did well what we didn't do well mm -hmm. but also just like taking a moment and looking at the story that unfolds and i guess for me this inspiration by having a blog means that I'm always thinking about documenting, writing down some notes. Yeah. It's extra incentive to name my heroes, mm -hmm. maybe name my units. If something does a legendary feat, then yeah. maybe they deserve a, a, a regiment name. Exactly. I, I actually incorporate when I play big battles, significant events, I'll work them into the story. Like my, my, um, my ghoul king, Marduk the wolf, one battle, he suffered a dimensional cascade. This was, you know, eighth edition. And it sucked him into the warp, and uh, that's that became his story. And I'm going to use that to justify how he was propelled forward into the Age of Sigmar out of the old world. So that's brilliant. That is absolutely brilliant. He's been fighting demons in the warp for you know a thousand years. He's he is the death go trick. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he's just come out of the warp. He's like, surprise, bitches! I'm ready to to take on those mortal realms. I'm just looking. I'm just looking at your meme on banshees, and oh. this is yeah. Yeah, I posted those up. Uh, was it today? Yesterday? This inspires me to create a blog. I'm just like, man, I need oh, a blog. Was yesterday. Uh, I I need to do a blog. I, I love it. Uh, yeah, do it. And just take take pictures. Uh, take pictures of your models. Take pictures during your games. Talk about talk about Warhammer. Talk about what you do in the hobby. You know, if you're the type of person who who uh, likes to do tutorials or wants to just share the the procedure you use for painting your particular models, share that. You know, and I guess you you can do it. There's there's some limitations to it, right? Some of the some painting tutorials are easier to do in video form. <clears throat> um, I've had I've had posts where I talk about stuff that I've sculpted on a model, right? And it's like, you, you can't really show sculpting in pictorial form. It just it doesn't work that well. But if I was to do a video, like a YouTube channel, um, and it's something I do want to explore in the future, I definitely, I would definitely love to do video tutorials and terrain tutorials in video form. Um, and they, that would, that sort of thing would be better served where you can like physically, like actually watch the person do it. So 
blogs are, you know, they're, they're good for sharing pictures, but tutorials are better in video. So, you, you know, there's, there's pros and cons to both of them. In saying all of that, you can incorporate a video into your blog post as well. So yeah, yeah. if you wanted to just, you know, you didn't want to commit completely to creating a YouTube channel. Um, you could always film that little part of the process. Maybe it was a priority role um, when you're playing a game, whether it's that particular part where you're trying to sculpt. And it's too hard to describe how you sculpt with this green stuff. You could always film that, put it in the blog post, still write about it, still have, you know, the before and after photos. Um, and it, it is, it's a very complimentary, you know, you can bring all mm -hmm. different mediums into a blog. Yeah, definitely. Do you have a favorite blog post that, stands out from from your own portfolio i yeah the one you were you were looking at earlier the uh the legion of the infernal skull a legacy of death that's like all uh, i i've been posting little snippets of about the army and the characters throughout the years and that's that collects everything that i had up to that point in one post i think it's it's been a couple of years since i posted that so it might be time to do a, another update um but yeah, I, I really, I'm really happy with that because that that collects some of the some of the best photographs I've taken of my models, and the little stories behind behind everybody, and who they are and what they do and you know where they are in the old world. And I, I end it by saying that like I don't have an end for this story. Like I don't I don't know how all of this is going to transfer over to the Age of Sigmar. Um, so as far as I'm concerned, my army still kind of lives in the old world. The, the 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 vampire counts portion of it, but I've, and where, I've, where you play it doesn't matter. This yeah. is about this yep. is about blogging and it's about hobby. And I think yeah, absolutely. And it's easy for me to say, oh, this is not Age of Sigma. It's not you know valuable. But um, we have old world wars coming, so who knows what that means? Yeah. Um, we have you know you could rebase them if you wanted to, or this could be the old story, and then you create a new story, and you know the how these characters have moved from Warhammer Fantasy to Age of Sigma. It doesn't irrespective. It's yeah. about your hobby. It's about sharing your passion yep. and getting excited. Yeah, and there's there's no such thing as irrelevant content. I don't think. Like I, I would totally follow a blog that was only about um, you know war machine and hordes right and i could imply anything i see there to my games of warhammer because painting models is painting models regardless of what the game system is you know there's there's historical games that you could you could uh you could look at um one of my friends uh chris walton he has his own blog called world of walton crafts world of walton's craft which is a play on world of warcraft but he he does a lot of like Napoleonics. He does uh, uh, Horus Heresy for, and 40k, Age of Sigmar, all kinds of stuff, you know. And and my my blog is not really limited to to just Age of Sigmar and Warhammer. I I show show off all the terrain that I make for all kinds of different game systems and models that I painted for other systems as well. And that's probably one of the limitations that I have as a YouTube creator, for example, is that being an Age of Sigmar channel if i put yeah, up yeah. Or have a fantasy or marvel crisis or, or if i'm if i'm playing yeah. another game uh, not that i am by the way folks i don't have the time to be investing in other games uh, i was playing in a warhammer fantasy battle sixth edition tournament next month oh. that just got cancelled this weekend because oh. of covid like i've been building up a 1500 point empire knight army um oh, wow. Yeah, it was pretty cool. I had just gotten uh, one of the limited edition uh, banner bearers, Ludwig. He was going to be my BSB. Oh, nice. I finally got my hands on him, and literally like two days afterwards, they cancelled the event. Oh, but no. if I was to post a whole, whole bunch of um, Warhammer Fantasy or Crisis or 40K or Sword and Spear, my audience might crack the shits at me. They're like, wait a second, you're a YouTube channel yeah. all about you know, Age of Sigma. So being a blog... I can use keywords to kind of distort and kind of move yeah. different parts yep. of my blog, but also it can be more of a hobby blog, which is more encompassing than mm -hmm. specifically a game or a system or a, a style. Yeah. 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 And I guess uh, when you're starting a, any type of channel or blog, you, you want to think about that too. Like who do you, what do you want your audience to be? Um, do I want to have an exclusive Warhammer blog or do I want to just, talk about everything and on mine in particular i just i just talk about everything it's not just it's primarily undead because that's my my first love 
uh, it was Warhammer and uh, and Warhammer Undead. But I I show off everything, you know. I'm probably never going to have a post about <laughs> about uh, chaos or slanish or anything because I don't play those armies. I don't paint those models. But that's you know. Oh no, you've been hacked. <laughs> What's that? I said, oh no, you've been hacked if yeah, you start talking yeah. about chaos. Uh, <laughs> We know Nagash and Chaos do well, not I play Skaven, they're right. technically Chaos. Yeah. They, they are. They actually are. <laughs> I was trying to find a link for you, but no, there's no link. There's no justification. Um, so talk to me. Like, Let's say someone's listened to this, this video or this podcast, and they're like, you know what? I'm going to start a blog. Mm -hmm. I'm excited. I'd like to give it a shot. Uh, I'm inspired to document my hobby, to, to share stories about my battle reports. I don't have the time to be editing videos. This is the medium for me. Mm -hmm. What advice would you give me um, to to get started? How do I how do I just take that first leap and, and create that blog? Just just do it. Just go to go to Blogger, start up a, a Blogger page. It's it's so easy. Like I said, you don't need any real technical know how. Um, if you've got models, take pictures of them. Write something about them. There's, there's, you know, there's, there's really nothing to it. Try to come up with a catchy name for your blog if you can, so people remember it. Um, maybe something more original than mine, the Rob Hawkins hobby blog. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it, it's I, I don't know. The, the best advice I can say is just, just do it. Don't, don't wait. Don't put it off. If, if, if you've got ideas in your head that you want to share with people, share them with people. You know. Uh, I, I was just remembering that um, you'd made a comment just previously about looking at other people's blogs that might not be in your system. And I, I draw a lot of inspiration from other people. So looking at, um, because I've been making a lot of terrain lately, I've been looking at like railroad modelers. Mm -hmm. I've been looking at uh, people who make uh, doll houses, looking at, you know, kind of crafts that are similar to what we do. Yeah. Uh, Dungeons and Dragons, looking at some of those people, like yeah. the the DMs Guild, uh, Luke Tow Towen. Um, yeah, Luke Towen. Runs, yeah, there's this a whole stuff bunch is of gorgeous. That's I watched one today before I came on here and doing a, a bridge over water. His stuff is is photorealistic. It's it's amazing, right? And it's not it's not wargaming related at all. But to, you know, scenery building techniques are you know there there's there's no bounds for them. They, like. You, you you shouldn't discourage yourself from looking at those things just because they're not Warhammer related. There are techniques in there that you can apply to Warhammer. And and it's interesting because they are, because you're right. Like I'll look at something that Luke Towen does, for example, and let's say he's he's using I don't know Woodland Scenics. They've got these like uh mar these plaster molds where they kind mm -hmm. of make like rock faces and you put yep, a bit yep. of plaster in. And I'm like right. Can I use that on basing? Oh, look, it might the the molds are quite big, so maybe not yet. But I could make my own molds. I could make yeah. my own molds with rocks, or yeah, yeah. I could use it for a display board. Or I could be thinking, well, maybe plaster is not for me. But how do I use plaster somewhere else on my on my display board? Mm -hmm. um, I've been getting a lot of inspiration using resin. They use a lot of resin, especially with water, and how they make realistic water and how they. You know, I was watching, was it Luke's APS the other day? And he, he was also showing not just the way he used resin, but also how do you do the base, the, the bed and make yeah, it to contain it all. Real. Yeah. Yeah. Make it look real as well. And interesting things at the bottom of the sea. Um, I think that's, again, it's where documenting and looking at things that aren't just specifically to Age of Sigma get exposed to new ideas that you can bring into your own hobby. Definitely. Definitely having a sip of water <laughs> so starting off with blogger going to find there's a lot of free blog sites so yeah yeah blogger's not the only one but that's that's the one i'm familiar with so so you know type up free blog um you will find a blog yeah, it doesn't site. cost anything either it doesn't cost anything you might get a generic url um your url might not be customizable if you wanted to buy a domain name they're like what GoDaddy, like ten dollars twelve dollars for yeah. a url sometimes yeah, I have a URL for my Skullforge Scenics um, website, but that's and, and yeah, it was it's like ten bucks for the year or something like that. It's not it's not that expensive. 
No, and most most blogs will give you a free a free amount of data. They'll say, look, you can have you know I don't know a hundred megabytes a month. Which yeah, I don't think there's time- any limit on on Blogger. It's because I've never run into any issues with not being able to post something because I've run out of space. I guess what I was going to try to say is you didn't if if, if you do find a blog site that uh, is charging you, you don't have to you don't have to upgrade to a premium service until you're ready to go. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You can start with the free stuff, get into the rhythm. Is this for me? Are, am I enjoy writing? Are people re- reading it? Mm-hmm. Maybe you pick a name to start with. You don't like it. You change the name. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you don't want to buy two or three domain names. So maybe you just settle in, learn the craft, and then spend the dollars. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. How do you find the topics to write about? I, I basically write about what I'm working on. So if I'm building scenery, I take pictures of it. I like for, I pretty much it's I don't want to say it's kind of ruined my hobby, but like I can't do anything now without documenting it as I go. Like the days of just, hey, I, cool, a new model. Let me put this together and paint it and put it on my shelf and then use it on the table. Those are those days are gone. I, anything I do, I gotta take pictures as I go so that I can put it up on the blog. Um, it's very rare that I just rush through a project. Usually, usually when I'm rushing through a project, it's because it's a commissioned terrain piece and I'm running up against the deadline and don't have time to take pictures of everything I do. But yeah, it's, I, I, I just share, excuse me, I share pictures of share, share posts about what I'm working on. You know, most of the time it's undead. I, anytime I'm working on my Skaven, I show that my space Marines, Necrons, um, scenery that I'm building. Um, a lot of times, like I have, I have two scenery projects that I've done for Marvel crisis protocol that I can't even post yet because they haven't released those things to the public. So I've got two more in the bag that I'm just sitting on, but yeah, I'll, I'll blog about whatever I'm working on at the time. That actually leads me to a question I've been burning to ask. And that is, so you've set up the blog and you've had some moderate success. What are some of the things that you can accomplish by setting up a blog? Um, have you had any opportunities raised to you? Um, I mean, obviously this video yeah. here is exposure. So you, yeah. you might be interviewed, but has any other opportunities come up to you over the last eight years? Absolutely. Well, I, I mean, I, I'm sure that like 90, 70, 75%, 90% of the, of the scenery commission work that I get is because they've seen my blogs and they've, you know, companies have approached me and say, Hey, can you build a display table for us to take to Gen Con? And yeah, I can do that. So yeah. So you, you will get exposure that way. Um, when I started my blog, I knew couple of years down the road, I wanted to start my own range of, um, of resin scenery products. So I figured, well, having a blog, I'll build an audience of people, the type of people that w- will want to buy, you know, hobby scenery. So I, you know, I sort of used the blog to, to foster an audience. And I have a, I have a, like an advertisement banner for my own stuff at the top of my page. And, you know, when I, when I create something new, I, talk about it on the blog, talk about how I sculpted it a little bit, show it off, talk about painting maybe. Um, I did a, those meteorites, I I have a whole step-by-step painting tutorial as a blog post. So it's, you know, it, it serves, serves, you know, double duty. It's, it's, you know, some self-promotion and, you know, just sharing what I'm doing. Um, I've got one of these, these ruined crypts from you. Um, <clears throat> And I've got my terror guys kind of holding on to it. Like it's just brilliant for those mounts. Um, but, and by the way, this is no product placement folks, but it just shows you that, you know, you start a blog today, uh, it, it may lead to something bigger and better, whether it might be uh, guest writing for Warhammer, you know, mm-hmm. the white dwarf. It could be uh, play testing. It could be, um, it could be writing up a description or a demo for an upcoming game. You know, mm-hmm. you're talking right now about Marvel Crisis, something that's coming up. We should all look out for. Yeah, I, think- I, I don't, I don't know the uh, the ins and outs of it or anything, but I, I would guess that Tyler Mangle probably got his work do, for. Um, doing doing posts for warhammer weekly because of his own hobby content that he's that he's doing he was doing his own mengel's miniatures blog long before he he started working on uh on warhammer um the warhammer community page right so that's, uh, yeah, that's, well, i mean that's yeah, tyler, this, i'm assuming i don't know how how it actually turned out but i would assume I that, tyler won a golden demon yeah. or he, he was a he was a prolific yeah. painter yeah. um he then also wrote up the fan 
his fan made Tomb King's battle tome. So he yeah, made yeah, like yeah. a yeah. Uh, yeah, and, and battle tone, as I like to call it, was really sweet. But you're right, you know, he, yeah. he was making these little simple infographic mm -hmm. tutorials of like how to paint black or how to paint blah. Yeah, and it and it got noticed. This yeah, stuff you get noticed viral by really. And for me, business. what comes in is that blogs go viral easy because yeah. they're easy to share, they're easy to consume, as opposed to mm -hmm. a video where Rob, if you put together, I don't know, a 25 to 30 minute tutorial on X. I yeah. need to have five to 30 minutes to watch yeah. that. Yep. A blog's very easy. Even if you don't read it, you can just scroll through and look at the pictures pretty quickly and get the gist of what's going on. Question from the chat that's come up really timely is they've asked, um, so Dat Turner has asked me, would you say that running a blog can help motivate you to do more hobby? Absolutely. Um, Part of it is, you know, when, when you're working on a blog, another thing, this is this would be advice to people who are looking to start one, is make sure you've got content to keep your audience engaged. And this is true of YouTube channels and everything. Like you try to try to set a schedule, sorry, try to set a schedule for yourself. Um, mine, I try to post at least once a week. Um, sometimes I fall behind because I have other, you know, real life gets in the way every now and then. But I, I generally try to post once a week. That's a reasonable amount of time to work on something and, and you know, have some kind of progress or something that you can show off that's that's new each, each week. Um, so stick to a schedule. Keep your audience engaged so they don't lose interest. Like there are some some podcasts and things that have haven't posted in months, right? And I, just, I don't even check them anymore just because they've fallen so far behind. <clears throat> dwellers below <laughs> but uh yeah. you gotta you gotta you gotta you gotta keep it going right and 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 forcing yourself to stay to some kind of schedule get lights a fire under your butt so you you work on things right yeah you've, you've got to watch out that the pressure doesn't make your hobby unenjoyable but by knowing that I want to post something every Wednesday or every Tuesday yeah. that my readers can, can, can enjoy on a Tuesday, mm -hmm. um, keeping to that schedule. But it also means, okay, right, it's the weekend currently. I haven't done any hobby. I've got a deadline on Tuesday that, I'm get, that, that, that people are going to expect something from me. I need to find a few mm -hmm. hours today. Otherwise, yep. I'm going to disappoint my audience. I'm not going to yeah. deliver to my schedule. Um and it might be just be a small update, but at least it's motivating you yeah. to make progression. And that, that's why I like my uh, my project log series because, like I said earlier, it's it doesn't those don't rely on being finished to 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 post them, right? I do as much work as I can, and then I just post a you know an update. This is part two. This, next week I'll have part three. I'll have a little bit more work done, and eventually, overall, you can collect all those together and look at them as a as a whole start to finish project that ends up being like seven or eight blog posts so you don't have to do all your blogs in you don't, you don't have to do all your content uh as like a retrospective like you know here's the start to finish journey yeah. there's very much these snapshots and that one drags out your content to multiple sessions mm -hmm. um but two you can kind of see the progression over time and three you've got a topic for now eight weeks as opposed to one yeah yeah and then again like you said it's not a retrospective so you don't you don't have to rely so much on your memory, right? You're, you're documenting it as you go along rather than finishing it all. And then being like, Oh God, what did I do at the beginning six weeks ago? <laughs> you know, it's, you just do it as you, as you go. What I, what I find really cool about blogs who do what you do is um, as a, as a consumer, I can leave feedbacks and say, Hey Rob, have you thought about this? Hey Rob, I like this. I've tried this product recently by, this company, mm -hmm. um, have you considered this on your base? And you could be like, oh, actually, that's a really good idea. And that could actually change the trajectory of your uh, hobby or whatever you're doing mm -hmm. because you're incorporating feedback. And that's where social media is really handy is that here's my work in progress. People provide me constructive feedback mm -hmm. and I could do it better. So that's an opportunity as well if you're doing not a retrospective but rather like snapshots as the hobby progresses. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, the project might take a turn that you didn't really expect at the beginning and turns out different than you than you thought. Having problems with green stuff and then someone mm -hmm. comes and says, I do this, so I let it cure for 15 minutes yep. before I try to sculpt it. You're like, oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Uh, every time I try to sculpt it, it's always sticky and I ruin the detail. Yep. And then you one used, person 
use chapstick. That's that's my my hobby tip of the day. Use chapstick to 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 lubricate your tools when you're working with green stuff and putty. Keeps it from sticking, and it's not it's not greasy like Vaseline. And uh, it's water. Water doesn't have the same same properties as it chapstick. Oh, that's it's an unexpected hobby. Profession, trip, I wasn't. Professional secret. Chapstick. So I'm going to steal my wife's chapstick, and she's going to wonder what's going on. <laughs> Todd Todd E asked um, a question that I think is really valuable as well. It's 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 certainly a struggle for people, and that is how do you how do you get return visitors? And I think that's one of the challenges, right? Is that we share this our content, we mm -hmm. might put it out to the world, and someone really enjoys an article from me. How do I get them coming back every week, every month, whatever my schedule might be? How do you get them coming back and putting them on as a website that they'll come back to? Um, you know, every morning I look at Warhammer Community to see what comes up. Yeah. How do I get that same principle in my hobby blog? I guess that comes comes to having a consistent schedule. Like I've said, try. try I mean, I'm terrible at at my. I used to when I started out, I was like every Tuesday I would post or every Sunday, and it shifts. And sometimes I'm on Wednesdays, and now sometimes I'm on Thursdays. I at least try to stick to once a week, though. But yeah, if you if you can stick to a specific day that you put up your posts every every week or or twice a week or however however frequently you can you can afford to do it, um, stick stick with a schedule that'll get people you'll become reliable, right? Be reliable is the best thing, the best answer to that. That'll get people coming back, and then you know, post stuff that people are interested in, you know. I, I would assume that most of my audience is uh, a more a fan of undead and more fantasy um, fantasy readers than 40k readers because I post more fantasy than 40k. But you know, if it, it I guess I guess there's probably a way to curtail your audience if you really want to have uh, a lot of 40k readers post 40k content, right? Uh, yeah, it, it's. It's a tough one, right? Because if I'm a 40K reader and I come to your blog and I enjoy it, I'm now going to expect more 40K content from Rob. Now, yeah. the question is, one, Rob, do you enjoy 40K enough to be posting an article a week on top of your death stuff? Mm -hmm. Two, do you have the time to commit to that? Um, yeah. And if if you don't, I'm probably going to get disappointed. So when I do come back, I don't see the 40K and I don't come back. Yeah. Now, obviously, there's websites out there, you know, like um, Goonhammer, for example, which is just that's not one person. That is a team of contributors yeah, yeah. that it allows them to put out so much content, so much great content in so many different games. But you are not that person. And I think it's important to understand how much can you handle so that you don't burn out your hobby by just writing articles just to satisfy the beast. Because yeah. there's one thing that I've learned as being a hashtag content creator is that I could never get people happy because I always want more. Yeah. Uh, yeah, People appreciate what I do, but they're like, oh, I want to do more videos, more videos, more videos. And it's like, guys, I've got life. I've got my own hobby to do. I need to play games. I can't just make videos seven days a week, but that's where that's the nature of the content beast. They yeah. always want more. And you've you've done what like three this week I think four I Te technically four because I actually recorded one on Friday night that is coming out on Tuesday so oh, I've done God. four videos I think yeah, in the last that's, three days that's a lot but people go oh what about this army what about this army I'd love it like guys yeah and I guess set, you set up expectations for yourself like right what 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 do you want your blog to be about if you want to do a blog that's just Space Marines then it's just Space Marines. And people will know. People will get to know that that's what your blog is about, right? I've been doing this for a while, and I guess I, th I hope people have the idea that my blog is about a little bit of everything. They know what what's in my wheelhouse. You know, it's going to be undead, Skaven, Space Marines, Necrons, and lots of scenery. Yeah, for the you, most part. you are death and terrain to me. Uh, I do enjoy your other stuff, but when I think of Rob Hawkins, I think of death and I think of terrain yeah. um, and the things that kind of come around with those topics. And the 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 scenery posts do get the most views out of everything. To be to be fair, that's you know that that like if I turn this into just a scenery blog and stop posting pictures of models, I'd probably do very well with 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 views and readership. Well, I guess it's a target market, to, right? But, 
Yeah. Because if because terrain is not just Age of Sigma and Warhammer Fantasy, terrain mm-hmm. is yeah t- tabletop like we, games. Like we on. said earlier, any even model railroad scenery is is relevant to to wargaming. Any any t- terrain applies to to anything. Those techniques can be are universal. And it, it it doesn't take a rocket scientist to go into YouTube and the the difference in content views, for example. Um, let's say an Age of Sigma list discussion that I might put out versus a painting tutorial. The painting tutorial will will smash the living hell out of the list discussion because mm. painting is applicable to all game systems, yeah. yep. to Dungeons and Dragons, to but there's just so many painting techniques. It's just it's just acceptable to a wider audience. So yeah, yeah. bigger. So think yep. about that. You know, talking about like the Age of Sigmar meta is really only relevant to Age of Sigmar players. So, question that's just come up in the chat, I think, is a really good one. Mm-hmm. So, Jeffrey has asked uh, Rob regarding social media feedback: Have you ever received feedback on a project update uh, on your blog that has changed the course of your plan? I don't know that I have. Um, I'm. Off the top of my head, I can't think of anything that that has really changed the course of a plan. Um, I don't think so. I mean, people people will mo- most of the comments I get are like, "Hey, that looks great," and it's like, "Thanks," you know, I appreciate it. But it doesn't it doesn't lead to any. It's you know, it's, it's basically just compliments, and compliments are great, but they don't um, they don't they don't motivate you to change what you're doing so would you like more constructive sure commentary? Yeah. yeah yeah um constructive feedback would be great um i've had so many people tell me that i paint fire wrong but i've been painting it that way for 20 years and i'm not going to change now because it won't match everything else so there's there's that aspect to it but uh you know yeah i i always appreciate constructive feedback everybody can can learn more um but I can't think of a specific example where somebody said, hey, you should try this, and that then the project turned into something totally different. I imagine someone might refer you to a, you know, a Vince Venturella painting tutorial, like, yeah. oh, you know, Vince told me about uh, liquid li- liquid metal from Vallejo instead of using, you know, um, a Games Workshop metal. I'm like, oh, cool, I'm mm-hmm. going to try that in the future. So that might change the directory of a project. Um but I can't imagine too much constructive, like, don't do that. Um, but but for me as well, I think all creators, while we appreciate the compliments, we do enjoy when you give us constructive feedback yeah, as well. Definitely. Um Chaos Spawn had said to me, and this is a really interesting one as well when it comes to monetization. Now mm-hmm. I don't think anyone gets into the game of writing a blog or creating a YouTube channel no, to monetize. For the money, no. It's, it's certainly not going to get you rich. I have not retired from work just yet, yeah. uh, nor do I ever see myself retiring from work. I don't think the money's there unless I was to, I don't know, sell my soul to Magic the Gathering. But do you find, one, have you tried monetizing your blog? I, I did. Um Early on, maybe my first or second year, I, I, I went through uh, Google AdSense to, to put ads on the blog, which is uh, just automated, you know, their ad service. And it didn't, it didn't really generate anything. Like, I think um, I, over the course of, I think I earned like $100 in ad revenue over the course of a little over a year. So it's like, what's the point? And That's in 10 months a month. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then, and then my readership, as 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 my audience grew and my my views and readership increased, it like almost doubled. And then the AdSense revenue took even longer to generate. Like it took like a year and a half to get to the next hundred dollars. And I'm like, why? Why am I even doing this? Like, what? I would have thought that having more views would lead to more ad revenue, but apparently not. So yeah, so I it didn't it didn't really work out. Um, the ads were just kind of lagging the page when I would look at it and I'm like, I'm not making any money off of this. Why, why even bother with it? So I just took it down. Um, I think for me, um, I, I want to ask you a couple of other questions with, with monetization. I think, I think YouTube might be a little better. Um, I, I don't know how, how the ad generation works on YouTube, but uh, like I said, I don't have a YouTube channel, so I don't know, but I would YouTube imagine it's a little you- better. 
YouTube requires you to have over a thousand subscribers um, and a minimum watch time. So not only do you have to have uh, 1000 subscribers to start earning money, Mm -hmm. but you've also got to have as a 10,000 hours or 10,000 minutes or whatever it works out to be right now. So it's also, it's, it's, it's about not, because obviously I could buy a thousand subscribers. I could buy that, but it's also the views. Right. But I know for me, one of the things that I have actively avoided is added, YouTube has recently added a feature that can add, uh, put ad, ads in the middle of my videos. So YouTube will already do it at the start and the end of my videos, yeah. which I don't care about. Like they're bookend. I'm not interrupting yeah. a discussion. That drives me but, crazy. Well, I've turned it off. Every video I go in, I actively turn it off. And I guarantee you I'm losing a lot of money, but I know the user experience and I know that um, your enjoyment and the likelihood to you to watch the full video as opposed to dropping off when that that Mm -hmm. ad comes about is is a lot lower. So for me, the monetization, you've got to be very careful and mindful of how you monetize. And I think that's where affiliate links probably work better. Yeah, I think I think with YouTube, don't 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 the people have to sit through the entire ad for you to get credit for the ad yeah. money, right? Yeah, and and, 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 and when it's, um, when it's, when it's one of those ads, ads, yeah, when when it's one of those ads that's like it's like that drives me bananas when I'm listening to a podcast or a video. Some people are good about it; they'll they'll specifically place ad breaks in the middle of the video, right? And it's like that that they finish that discussion and ad. Like if people watch uh, Red Letter Media's movie review videos, they they do their ads placement perfectly. But uh, other people are just like, it'll just be like mid-sentence, boop, here's here's an yeah. ad for whatever. And then when those ads come up, I just, I can't click skip fast enough. So they're so not going to make money off of that anyway if people are just skipping the ads to finish hearing what sentence they were in the middle of. So I guess... Um... I guess, you know, obviously you don't have that challenge as a blogger, but what you do have, as you mentioned, pop-up ads. And I'm not mentioning any name, Bell of Lost Souls, but, you know, having too many pop-up ads, you know, really impacts. Yes, you've you've generated a bunch of revenue, but at what cost? Mm -hmm. And websites like that then just become clickbait. And it really comes back to why am I doing what I'm doing? And what do I want to be known for? Yeah. Do I want to be just doing clickbait, rumor mill, stirring the pot to earn a couple mm-hmm. of bucks? Or do I want to really do, use it as an archive to create value, to document my history, to 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 promote myself and my skills and maybe do some commission? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Some some like even like a lot of news websites, like legitimate news websites do this too, where you go to them. And it's just nothing but ads. And it's like, oh, here's the three paragraph. Here's, here's three lines of text about what the news story was. And I don't, I don't even, I don't even go to those sites anymore. That's not worth it. So, so obviously, your so if you wanted to monetize a blog, uh, let's say that's something that you would like to. And I think most people who want to monetize monetize because they want to pay for hosting costs, maybe to upgrade their their yep. cameras. To it's more about the investment yeah, in the in the community as opposed to retiring rich in the Bahamas. So how, how can you monetize a blog? Like what are some of the ways without going the bell of lost souls route? Um, (laughs) I think like I've, I've seen people have, um, what is it called? Coffee. There's like a, a, a little, little donate button on the sidebar. Yeah. A tip jar. I think there's one, I think it's specifically called coffee, like buy a cup of coffee for the creator. Um, so there's, there's things like that, tip jars, donate buttons, you know, donating to PayPal and that sort of thing. Um, again, that, that, that probably would, would generate more money than, than the ads. Cause I'm sure there are a lot of people out there who would just like to throw money at you to thank you for, for doing what you do, you know, whereas yeah, ad, ad revenue just trickles in to the point that it's nothing, you know? Unless you're getting thousands of views yeah. uh, a, a week, um, your Google ads don't really, they're not worth it. But no. you're right, coffee. So it's, I think it's K O F I or K O F I. You can get monetary like PayPal kickbacks. Mm-hmm. You've obviously got your little store. Um, mm-hmm. uh, alternatively, you've got um, affiliate links. So um, you might get an affiliate link with, let's say, Amazon. So let's say you were demonstrating, I don't know, Green Stuff World Roller. 
Um, mm-hmm. The first thing that comes to my head. Um, if you go out and buy, if you click my link and you go buy a Green Stuff World roller, I might get, I don't know, 5%, mm-hmm. 10%. I get a kickback from Green Stuff World um, through affiliate links. Yeah, I have, I've never used affiliate links, so I, I don't really have any experience with how they, how they work. Um, Basically, you get like a little code. Like, like you hear like Element Games, like mm. uh, Face Hammer, you have like a, um, a, a code. So anytime you purchase an Element Game and you put in, I don't know, Face Hammer or whatever it might be, Element Games will give you a kickback as well. So if you are demonstrating a lot of tutorials and you, you're showing off the new painting range in Vallejo or maybe Army Painter's new brushes or whatever it might be, and you've got an affiliate with a game store, whether it is with um, the manufacturer themselves, there is little ways you can get kickbacks. But again, it's not a lot. Yeah. Another another question I've got from the chat is, um, I've, Dragonor has mentioned that um, they're not huge in the blogging world and not really big in the blogging world just yet. But I think they're really interested to learn how you tap into SEO or search engine optimization or basically making sure that Google knows you exist. Um, do you have any hints when it comes to Google? I don't know anything about that. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I'm, I, like I said, I'm not, I'm not that computer savvy, so I don't, I don't know how to, how to manipulate that sort of thing. Um, I, yeah, I really, I really don't know. I don't know how. Fair. That's fair. Like I'm just putting on the spot with them. Yeah, yeah, no, that's uh, okay. But that might be something that if you, again, if you want to monetize and it's important to you, you'll want to make sure that Google is picking you up in the algorithm mm-hmm. and you'll want to search SEO um, and find keywords, Age of Sigma, Games Workshop, uh, Warhammer. These are words that you want to have in your blog um, and using social media as well to kind of um, build an audience. One, th- one thing I would point out that I just thought of is you can get an RSS feeder um, and that will allow your blog to be posted to different RSS links. Um, and I think, what was it? Table, um, tabletop news. They used to, they had a, like a blog feed that you could apply to, to, to have your blog be posted as part of that. Um, and when I would check that out, one of the things I noticed was that basically my entire blog was, showing up in their in their feed one for one right so you could read it all there without even having to click over to the to a link to 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 come to my page and if i still had my ad revenue going you know generate ad revenue or or at least get views on my page um so one thing you should definitely do is in the blogger has the option to insert a break so i usually have if you look at my very early posts they don't have this they're just all on the front page but nowadays i have um, a little intro sentence or paragraph. I have a photograph, and then there's a break, and then it says read more. And when it appears in an RSS feed, it only shows that first photo before the break. So they have to click to get to your blog to read it. They can't just see it outside of your blog. So that, that's, that's a good tip. To think about. That's a good tip, especially if you are trying to monetize as well. Yeah. Um, and as the chat's saying as well, um, you know, SEO is important, you know. So if you are starting up, and obviously, Rob, you've now got an established brand, so um, it's certainly a lot easier. But if I was starting up my blog, I'd want to make sure I was tapping into um, Twitter. I'd be using, you know, making sure that social media knows, hey, I've just put out a, a blog post on Blah. So yep. you're kind of passing it out there, building awareness, as well as tapping into SEO. So, um so Google's picking you up. So if someone does type in tutorial basing um, Nagash, I have a chance to be put up on the on the, yeah. the feed to be able to be seen to more people. Mm-hmm. And you have uh, you have the option to put in tags on your on your blog posts. So I'll put in a tag like Night Haunt, Legions of Nagash, Undead, Scenery, whatever. Um, and those those show up in the sidebar. So there's those labels. So that kind of allows you to, to separate things out within the blog itself. So if you want to see, like you just scrolled past my Black Templars, all of my Black Templars posts are under that. I'll click Blood Knights. Um, I know, I know Deke would be Knights. very excited to, to talk about Blood Knights. So um, here is here is now just uh, only, only all of the posts when it comes to the Blood Knight tag. So you've done that yourself. Yep, yep. And I don't know how that really helps with... Um, Google searches. I don't know if those factor into it at all. I mean, 
blogger is run by Google. So maybe, maybe that helps um, place them somewhere in within their search engine a little bit more. So if you search for blood nights, maybe this will pop up on Google. And I can see here you've tied in your, your Twitter handle as yeah, well. Yeah. Uh, you've, you've promoted your followers. Um, again, you know, like in this episode description, folks, um, we do have a whole bunch of blogs that we've recommended. I know. Um, Rob, so, Rob, who who did you recommend? I, I've got a few that I've recommended, but you had said um, Tyler Mengel, for example, as a great yeah, blog. Yeah, yeah Mengel. Um, World of Walton's Crafts, Chris Walton is another one. Uh, he's a friend of mine, and I, I read his his blog posts every now and then. Um, and then the Con Convertorum by uh, Jeff Vader, I think it is. Jeff Vader's Convertorum. He has like so many great conversions in painting on there. It's 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 amazing. He doesn't post very often though. It's, so that's that's it's one of those examples of I don't check it for weeks at a time because there's not that updates aren't that frequent. But when he does update, it's always amazing. So it's it's worth the wait. <laughs> And, and, and you know youtube no different there are some youtubes that post once a month and they put all of their love blood sweat and tears into one post while other people will put out multiple posts or at least once a week so it depends on kind of what your commitments are like and mm -hmm. and how fast you can work and maybe you can when i very first started i was starting off like one video a month then i pushed myself to one video a fortnight and you know you you, you get into a rhythm you mm -hmm. build a process you get more comfortable and you're able to do more stuff. Yeah, yeah. I know for me, I put a couple of links down. So from an HR Sigma perspective, Plastic Crack is one that I, I love. That's um, Australian by the name of Pete. Pete does an amazing job breaking down. He's very destruction orientated. He's almost like the destruction version of you. Mm -hmm. um, but he's great. AOS Shorts is, is a blog that we all should know and love. Runax was one. Um, I think I might have put a couple of others. There are a lot of cool ones um, uh, that are yeah. available. Again, there's search so that. much content out there. It's it's fallen out of the sky. <laughs> Rob, is there any other final thoughts that you'd have when it comes to blogging? Any reasons that uh, maybe you shouldn't do a blog? Um, anything that you've learnt along the way that you'd want to share that you haven't already shared in this um, this valuable insight video? Um. I don't think so. I, I would just say, you know, if, if you've got stuff that you want to share with the world, go ahead and do it. You know, S start a blog of your own, share pictures of your army and your, your hobby experience. You know, if you're more into to the gaming aspect, talk about, talk about just, you know, the, the gaming meta, talk about the, the games that you play. You know, you, you could even start a, uh, if you've got a, a dedicated gaming group, you know, maybe there's like five of you that play together regularly. You could start one blog for everybody and everybody could post something. And that would, that would, uh, allow you to have a couple posts a week, maybe without, without one person having to write everything. That's actually a really good point as well. Maybe the, the blog is less about you, but maybe it's more about your the, gaming community. Yeah. Um, and that's, that's really at the end of the day, what all this is about is just the community or, you know, the, the wargaming community, being part of that, contributing to it, enjoying it. I, I actually, that's a really good idea, actually. Um, Cause then that means you can produce more content more quickly mm -hmm. and it allows you to share off different things. So if someone doesn't yeah. like death, but they like order, you could show off order. If, if what, someone in your group is more of a, uh, a painter, you could obviously show off painting. Mm -hmm. Like there's a lot of cool stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Everybody's going to have some, some skill that they're a little bit better at or different, different skills between the, between the people. Um, um, and, and at the very least, you'll probably have, if there's like five people, let's say in a group, you'd have probably five different armies to, to cycle through and show off week, week to week. So here's another example of a blog that I read a lot. It's called multiple nerdgasm and it is a Dungeons and Dragons style, um, blog, but it's, it's by a, a husband and wife duo. So, um, and it's interesting cause they create, um, Dungeons and Dragons, both dungeon master and player reference mm. guides. So cheat sheets and resources that help them, um, you know, why I always play a female character. So very interesting topics for a player or for a, a dungeon master. And yep. again, that allows them to scale because there's two people on the team as opposed to one. So yeah, yeah. Uh, that was just another one that kind of come to mind. Maybe the final question before we wrap this up, because I've got another, uh, this is the last question that's come up from the chat is 
Rob, do you follow? This is coming from Perkins, by the way. Perkins, uh, Dearborn. Rob, do you follow? Uh, do you simply follow your own interest, or do you take ideas from others, or both for blog topics? Um, I mostly follow my own interests. Um, I would certainly take ideas if people had suggestions for things they would like to see me. Like, hey, I'd like to see you paint one of these things or build this type of scenery. I, I, I definitely do that. You know, throw throw a comment uh, on my on my blog post or on Facebook or Twitter or something. You know, I'm always I'm always looking for new ideas of what to work on because you do. That, that would be another thing to to point out is like, it's it's very easy to get burned out, especially if you're trying to push yourself week to week to, to stay on top of things, especially now with, with COVID-19 and people being stuck in the house. Um, at first it's like, great, nothing but hobby time all the time. And it's like, ugh, hobby time all the time. It's, you know, it, it uh, you, it's very, very easy to get burned out. And um, lately I've been painting my night haunt and they're very, very, very samey painting, painting white sheets and black sheets does wear on you after a while. So I kind of put them on the back burner and worked on some terrain. And, you know, you, it's, it's, you, it, there's, there's, there's plenty of stuff to do, but it's not always obvious what to do, if that makes sense. Um, so yeah, yeah if people, if people had ideas or suggestions that they'd like to see, I would, I would totally entertain it. Um, I, I put out a poll way, way back in the beginning um, saying, what, what are people interested in? And I listed a whole bunch of stuff just to get an idea of what what people were interested in seeing um so i, sh I should probably run another one of those and yeah see i've what, um, see what people think so i i i do polls and, and i should probably i should do more of them i probably do it more on discord now than i do um on on twitter or things like that but even just like hey guys what would you like to see in yeah. october and november um and another thing that i've kind of been doing again is trying to forecast what I'm going to be doing. So almost not just with a schedule, right? Like a schedule, like I say, you know, and this is like the YouTubers, they tell you to do this a lot, is advertise your schedule. So if you are always mm. going to have a new blog post every Monday, have it on your banner, have it easily so people know yeah, that every yeah. Monday is you expect a new article or a video from me. Um, but with myself, I've been posting, putting these little like almost like television guide um, images to say, look, on this day, I'm going to be interviewing Rob. On this day, yeah. I've got a description on Beast of Chaos. So pe people get excited. And then they might say, oh, Anthony, when are you going to talk about Legion of Night? And I'm like, well, I haven't thought about that yet. But if people are going to give me ideas, one, I know they, they're interested. Yeah. But two, it, 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 it takes the pressure off me trying to generate ideas because now I've got a whole log of people want to see mm -hmm. this type of discussion. Yeah, totally. Um, or it could be, you know, just showing off maybe the, the you know, maybe you pick up Soul Wars, you pick up um, the new Lumineth box and you unbox it, you know, maybe that's a, that's a blog post in itself. And then, you know, that's cool. Look, plastic sprues. <laughs> Surprisingly, they're popular. I don't yeah. get it. I don't get the unboxings. I like now the games <laughs> workshops take photos of their sprues and put them on the website. Yeah, it's I, not I, as I it's really not as special anymore. But people love it. People yeah. love, you know, opening up white dwarf. People love the unboxing things. They're like, but again, this is why by knowing your audience and asking what they want, they'll tell you and guide you how to create more content. Yeah, I love Tabletop Inquirer's article about, you know, unboxing. Look, the sprues are exactly what GW showed us on their website. <laughs> Well, there's another one like those guys and um there's a couple of satire uh, you could you could write satire articles yeah as well. yeah totally <laughs> it's the onion for tabletop wargaming there's a couple of them actually there's um a couple of really good ones so rob this has been really awesome i've learned yeah, yeah. a lot thanks um, for having me on no man it's an absolute pleasure it's, it's an absolute royal shame that you've been making blogs for over eight years and this is the first youtube <laughs> uh, or any type of video in uh, video interview so I'm excited. I hope to see more blog posts. If you are inspired to to do blogs, um, or even you want to learn more about blogging, um, in the in the description for this video or this podcast, you will find Rob's blog. So go check it out. We've given you Rob's blog. Um, I've given you a whole bunch of uh, other blogs, both that Rob and I have recommended. Not the only ones out there, but it's just a bit of a sample for you to kind of get a feel of of, of all the blogs out there. Um, any final thoughts or any comments before we kind of bring this home? I don't think so. I think we said it all. 
I again, thank, thanks for having me. I appreciate you uh, reaching out to me and bringing me on the show. I've been a, been a fan of your, your pod, your, uh, your channel. So it's nice to talk to you. <laughs> Mate, well, it's it's an absolute pleasure. I, I, it's a royal shame that it took you this long. Um, go start a blog. Go. Yep. I want to see more blogs. Do it. Uh, if if I don't have this, if you are watching this, and I have not named your favorite blog, put it in the yeah. uh, the comments section so that other people can find that. So mostly, I'm I'm mostly interested in Age of Sigma. Happy for Warhammer. Happy for terrain building and things like that. Let's keep it to the, the audience. But if there are blogs that you recommend, folks, and I haven't talked about it, please comment me now. But uh, thank you very much, Rob. This was awesome. Um, thank you, Anthony. Cool. All right. Thanks, folks. And uh, enjoy. Bye. Weekend. Go, go. We'll get Rob's stuff <laughs> right now. Go look. Go look at Rob right now. Take G'day. I hope you enjoyed that video and you're left with some new ideas. One of the biggest ways you can contribute to AOS Coach is by liking the video you just watched and leaving a comment in the comment section. This lets YouTube know this is a good video and it should recommend it to other hobbyists. If you'd also like to support the channel even further like these bloody legends, go check out AOS Coach on Patreon. Otherwise, don't forget your triumph. Okay.